Hello everyone, today is a special episode because I'm doing that in English language uh, because of our special and super uh, amazing guest who is American uh, but uh, actually the world citizen I would say because uh, he lived in uh, several countries, visited more than 50 countries and also he is entrepreneur, uh, lawyer, uh, great leader uh, adventurer. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's warmly welcome Rob Sherman. Grew up in, in Boston, in the U.S., Boston, Massachusetts, and my dad was a dentist. Both my parents are still alive, thank goodness, and my mother was in She's a master's degree in math mm -hmm. and very educated uh, and gave up teaching math mm -hmm. for raising three kids. Um, we're going back to my undergraduate. I studied English literature at Boston College and I did a, a minor in teaching English as a foreign language. Mm. And that was something that I knew would also be something valuable when I went around the world. Uh, if I did want to become a teacher, uh, that was something in we say in our my back pocket, mm -hmm. and that helped me get to Kazakhstan. To be honest, after the Peace Corps and after yeah. Kazakhstan, I was an international development IT consultant, and for a few years, I thought I had the best job in the world. I could mm. I go from Kyrgyzstan to Vietnam to Mexico for mm. all these places, and so I wasn't your typical IT person. And so I remember they told us to tell you to, because it was an international company, you need to learn f more languages. And the IT people all looked at the, the boss and said, well, I know ASP, I know SQL, and no, she's mm, no, foreign yeah, languages. Yeah. And I said, well, I know Russian and, <laughs> and I can write well. And then so that got me to be oh. the consultant to, because the client in some of these times was uh, the Asian Development mm -hmm. Bank and they wanted to be able to talk with the local government people mm -hmm. in Russian. Having the ability to communicate with other people of your professional expertise, in this case it was IT, mm -hmm. really helped me get to be, go to all these different places, work in these different mm -hmm. projects, help gov foreign governments uh, modernize, and, and Russia did a yeah. legal but reform. So, so, so why quit yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, it's funny. My supervisor said the same thing when I said, I'm, yeah. I'm moving to Hawaii to yeah, learn to be a lawyer and, and get an MBA. And the best answer to that is why we're sitting here today. I wanted to come to China, even though... On that time? Yeah, even in, at that time, I knew I wanted to come here in China. After Kazakhstan, I traveled here with my older brother and my mm. dad, went to nine cities in three weeks and oh. just saw, you know, they're building the Three Gorges Dam and just uh, saw all these things that are happening. And this was back in 1998. Actually, the first interview at this con consulting company where I became an IT consultant, the boss asked me, he said, where do you see yourself in five years? And I told him, in law school. In law school. <laughs> yeah. He didn't uh, laugh. Um, but you, I, you knew that. Yeah, I knew it. And, you know, people say, well, I'd be leading a division here. Or I'll be doing that. I said, yeah. no, I'll, I won't be here. And, <laughs> and so <laughs> why would you want to go to Hawaii? And I said, I don't know, but it's my first choice. Mm. And it was it, it, a lot of it had to do with this Chinese law program that was well known, as well as this idea that if I'm going to be coming to Asia and Pacific, then... There's a culture, there's an everyday point of view that I can't get being in Boston mm. or I can't get being in Washington. Wrong. So we can call it as a trap, trampoline or the foundation yeah. before you come to yeah, China. Yeah, that's a right? good way to put it. Yeah. It was a, We could say it's a stepping stone yeah. sometimes. I knew that Hawaii is somewhere, it's some kind of island. Then mm. I checked, it's really like in the middle of the yeah. Pacific Ocean and you lived there for four years. Yeah. Wow, yeah, can you just if like uh, if you want people come to Hawaii you would say like this is Hawaii like in just three words needs no introduction <laughs> <laughs> it's funny I was mountain climbing in in Switzerland once and I'm the mountain guide he spent six months in Hawaii six months mountain climbing in Switzerland and I asked him about Hawaii this before I got him. I said tell me same question tell me about Hawaii he said it is the only place that looks like the postcard it is that beautiful wow. question of what I understood 
about China after spending two years at, at Beida and learning Chinese was everyone really is here in an, an amazing sort of similar spirit of hardworking, mm -hmm. uh, patriotic, and really hopeful about the future. How many years you lived in Beijing? Uh, lived in Beijing 2008 to 2012. Well, four so years. four years. But so why you moved to Chengdu then? Here well, so from Chengdu. 2012 went to, uh, actually was in Tibet. Every year when I was in Beijing, even before I was in Beijing, I visited Tibet a bunch of times. China has these big cities, Beijing and Shanghai and Chengdu, uh, where they would have also these remote areas that have these tall mountains and at these high elevations of 3,000 meters. And that's something I'd never seen. I would mm -hmm. always wanted to live in a place like that. Again, yeah, it's it sounds really cool uh, living in such kind of places yep. and for many years. But uh, what did you do for a living? <laughs> you, you taught English or? No, you... I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good question. So I was a student at Tibet University learning Tibetan language and there is still working on different legal projects in oh. different country. I'm, uh, but at the same time, what I was really focused on was helping travel agencies develop their programs for foreigners so that people could really see what I was able to see by living there and getting a sense of the local Do culture. There's always things that I think we all have that are skills that we can turn into something that is not only maintain a, a simple lifestyle, but, but, but also profits. entrepreneurial. Or, yeah. And this is to go back to maybe an earlier question or maybe it's a future question of what the, I learned in, in Kazakhstan. And it might seem like a strange answer, but I learned that being an entrepreneur in Kazakhstan, and this was way back, I mean, you were saying when you were a kid, mm -hmm. and that was this project, the the Peace Corps, the U.S. Agent, the US government that sent us a volunteer said, this is your official job. And in my case, it was English teacher, mm -hmm. especially first year. But we want you to look around where you are and see what they need and see what people want as, as maybe it's mm -hmm. a service, maybe it's something, and what you're good at and what you have a passion at, for. And we want you to develop this as a secondary project. Mm. You kind of develop this, whether it's confidence or this idea that there's something that I want and some place I want to be and maybe an area of work that I want to explore, maybe I'm good at, maybe I'm not. Uh, I've been, I did it when I was in college. I went on uh, to Alaska on a fishing boat yeah. and worked in these different things. And maybe you then check off the box and say, maybe I won't do this for the next 60 years of my life because <laughs> this is either dangerous or I'm going to die young or this, but uh, maybe it's not what I'm interested in. But I've always tried to so look at what I'm interested in and where that might be uh, needed. And that's how you ended up being as... Uh business owner for the yak meat yeah the yak, well the yak, yak meat was uh when i was in tibet the tibetan friends who were very kind to me would give me these big box of dried yak meat of okay. their version we, we can show your <laughs> okay yeah okay so this is your uh the main official business that's let's say. yeah for how many years already this has been in here in shanghai we're talking less than a year since all the permitting and the process, mm -hmm. but this has been something that came as a first as an idea mm, almost four years ago four when years I was ago. traveling in the Sichuan, the Tibetan areas of Sichuan. Uh, however, started making, in this case, the, the yak, mm -hmm. dried yak meat here, was back eight years ago when I was in Lhasa and given the local version of it. And I thought, well, it would be interesting to see if we could make the dried yak meat but using the American style and mm -hmm. different flavors and and so that's something that I started to do when I was in this dorm room in Tibet mm -hmm. University and then when I came here to Shanghai afterwards when I wanted to lead a more healthy diet then I decided okay well I have a recipe and an idea and know how to make jerky or dried meat and I knew people in the gym and CrossFit and sport uh, that wanted to 
have this product too and I can't find it here in Shanghai so that's why mm. I came up with the idea once I was coming from climbing in, in Sichuan and I saw okay this is where all this yaks grow and I asked my Tibetan friend I said if you do you know anyone that raises yaks he said oh yeah I grew up with people who had these beautiful valleys of, of naturally raised yaks mm -hmm. and I said okay well if we can work together and we can get the, the yak meat. I think there's a business idea. Yeah, I saw the picture of you. You, you, you show us uh, in Toastmasters, mm. like uh, when you went to, back to Kyrgyzstan, I think. There was another rope, actually. <laughs> it was like uh, plus, as you said, maybe 20 kilos, uh. the round uh, guy. <laughs> you cannot hug him. <laughs> so. And now I see like super slim, super uh, sporty uh, man. So how did you make that big uh, change in your life? Uh, the, probably the biggest thing was the the eating, the the nutrition. Whereas I think I had always been with sports, whether growing up playing American football or baseball or hockey. Mm. But I think once in so with those sports, always exercising and lifting weights. But I think when once I realized that we all could be running marathons or lifting weights, but it's what we eat that makes the biggest difference on our body composition as well as how we feel. I mm -hmm. mean, I think a lot of people or what we drink, that made the biggest difference for me. And once I became aware of that, once I talked to people who were very knowledgeable about this, I just saw that there was these kind of three areas that I just needed to change myself and I couldn't really expect any difference of being uh, this fat guy or bigger guy uh, and turning into someone who had a, you know, whatever, a six pack or, yeah. or someone who we could- We can put that picture no, here. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but this idea, nothing's gonna change unless I change the food that goes into your body. Okay. Yeah. Talking about your another hobby, yeah. I know you also uh, quite like the diving. Yeah. And you, I don't know how many times per year, but mm. you try to go to different diving spots right. in the world, right? Can you a little bit uh, put some lights in this shadow for uh, us? Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Shine a light on that shadow. That's a good way of putting it. Um, well, for starters, two thirds of the earth is water. So if we are going to be explorers, if we are going to be people who are adventurers and try to see different things, I know. SpaceX and we're working on space tourism, but here on Earth, if we are going to be able to see things that we don't normally see, going underwater is one of the places that, to me, is just this fascinating world that once you get a certificate that you're going to be safe underwater and, and not do yourself and anyone harm, and especially the underwater life, it's a way of seeing the world and the natural world mm. in ways that yeah, maybe we'll see it in an Astro Geographic documentary or something, but to see with your own eyes and to see this world, this living world is amazing. Mm -hmm. A world that uh, we didn't create and that we are just guests in, and we don't get that sometimes. We don't get that yeah. when we're sitting in this you know, skyscraper in Shanghai and thinking, Absolutely. you know, yeah. look at man is the superior animal on earth, aren't we? Yeah. And no, we're not. Uh, when you, you know, see a whatever, three four meter shark down there yeah. you, you realize yeah. you you are not the, you, you, are. you are not the big fish <laughs> in the pond right so it's uh, very good point yeah. yeah i like it very much yeah and uh, let's go up up let's go okay up. yeah i know okay. you dive under like in the ocean and you also climb the the highest mountains in the world and actually you have the a dream right yeah. to reach all the s seven the highest peaks in the world mm. am i right yep uh, yeah. that's my uh, miachita as you say yeah, uh, so how, how many have you already like uh climbed three three, three. uh so africa actually when my kilimanjaro when i was in kazakhstan I actually went down to kilimanjaro mm -hmm. and so that's africa in europe is actually Elbrus in Elbrus, Russia yeah. is the highest in, in so uh, third one is just in Australia it's, it's more of a, a big hill but, n but it's still a, a mountain Kaziusku uh, last year you, you went to oh, so that, Argentina so Argentina was Aconcagua yeah. so I that one it, it's a 7,000 foot wow. mountain 
I got to 6,400 meters. So you, you couldn't no, get, so you, the top, it, w it was just one of those. Although you supposed to, like you planned yeah, to. Yeah, 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 so that was the goal. And after, it, so I, I am in one sense happy that I didn't do it. And in another sense, uh, I wish that I had a little more uh, experience in, in the past. So it had been a, a delay after a 16 year layoff that I went back uh, you want to do it again? Oh yeah, yeah. You got to get the same mountain. Yeah, yeah, same mountain, same same way. Hopefully, same guide. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was even now. I'm in the gym here in Shanghai on the stair machine, wearing You're always wearing w always wearing oh. uh, not just a 15 kg vest, but I'm always wearing 30 kgs now or 30 pounds, 15 kgs. So you are when I do you it. are always ready to climb. Yeah, once, once it's, it's open, you you go up. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm there. I'm <laughs> What is your uh, like okay. uh, daily schedule? And if everything goes according to plan, the the previous day, then getting up around six or five thirty to be out the door at six or six thirty to go to either do fitness at the gym or now what I've done a lot now is doing yoga and so yoga doing an, a morning class and being able to do that before. The, the work day mm -hmm. starts to me really is the one of the best ways to, yeah, to start, start the day. day and it gets you know everything kind of mm -hmm. not just moving physically but also the brain you know stimulating and, and mm -hmm. this idea then you also have with yoga and it isn't just you know chanting and, mm -hmm. and incense it's actually moving but it gets my brain stretching thinking about your body. Right, yeah, it's stretching the body as well as I do hot yoga mm -hmm. and so you're sweating and uh, it, or try to do the hot yoga classes, if the, especially if they're offered in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then, but your brain's thinking, your brain's thinking about, your brain is still, and your brain is thinking about the problems of the day. And, and so it's actually really helpful for focusing on work problems. And then once you can get out of the, the yoga class of then being ready, okay, now I'm in a position to do it and having that time to really reflect on the problems and then think up creative ways that we, might not otherwise come up with the problem with a solution to the problem I, you know try not to schedule anything before 10 and it's not because I'm lazy and it's not because I'm trying to sleep late it, it's because I think in the morning if you kind of make that time sort of walled off and fenced off and no one can and so I try not to even answer any of these you know WeChat messages or emails definitely not emails before then and the world is moving but the world is moving and their priorities and doing those things I try not to let those interfere with me and I think making that idea of you win the morning you win the day I found it's so true yeah we talked a lot about yeah, China your business here mm -hmm. uh, and like generally you lived here for 16 years how do you feel yourself definitely, being so long here definitely see China as a home I definitely see China as a fascinating place that uh, I'm never bored at and mm -hmm. I'm always learning something and it I mean we all have especially as foreigners here in China have obviously you know some a place to go back to of your your home country but at the same time I've always looked at it this as being a home and making it and such and mm -hmm. It, that requires obviously learning the culture and the language if you really want to integrate yourself and and so that's what I've been trying to do and mm -hmm. and I feel like it's paying off it, when I was in uh, working on a project to for the improvement of the Russian judicial system uh, to improve the courts mm -hmm. and they had the former, I think, dean of the judicial college in Russia and then had these judges from Russia and you'd go to Russia to meet with them and talk with them and, and help the project. And that term, it was an IT consultant. And then had the pleasure of then hosting them when they came to Washington, D.C. And I remember the, it was at the end of their study tour and wanted to buy some things for people back home. And so they really appreciated the effort. And so they said, okay, when we're done buying all that stuff, we said, I want to take you out to a restaurant. I was like, well, it's 
kind of late. I don't, I don't even know if one's open. So we find a restaurant that's open. And I remember this, this older guy from the, the Russian Judicial College, the head of the Russian Judicial College, told the story. And he said, you know, some important person in Russia tells his son, I want you to go and, and build a home across this country and across this land. And, and don't come back until you, you've done that, when you build a home all, all over. And then the, the son goes into all these different cities and you can kind of you know, order people because he has this power of, and, and uh, gets people to build these, these houses. And then he comes back to his, his father and says, see, I've done what you told me. I've gone across this, this whole world, this whole land, and you know, what we consider our world. And, and I've done what you said, I built a home. And his father said, no, you, you went around and you built houses. What I told you is build a home, okay? Mm -hmm. And so then this guy from the Russian University then looks at me then and says, what you've done today is you, wherever you go in Russia, you have built a home because of all of us. And I was like, oh. wow. <laughs> you know, like yeah, but at the same time, I thought that is cool. And that, once someone develops that kind of idea that, oh, well, I'm just a person going to uh, a place and I want to be able to do this and not worry about anything else, not worry about do I have the education, do I have the, the money, do I have the official documents, do I have all this stuff that's going to mm -hmm. make that likelihood of being yeah, able yeah. to go from, from that point A where you're starting to go to the point B and succeed, just focus on the simple f fact that person trying to do this goal and need everyone's support around you and how do I get that it, it, just by being yourself. That wherever you go and maybe, you know, my Russian, you know, isn't very good or maybe my oh. Chinese, you know, the, the tones are off. Or maybe, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as you're communicating, you're showing and you're doing something that people appreciate. And, Absolutely. and the exactly. more people have expectations that the, the more they're going to be disappointed. And I think mm -hmm. the, the less also we, we shut off our brain to learning and, and understanding. And I think the more we listen and the more we look around and we see these different cultures or different things, then uh, the more we understand that... How small we are. How small we are, how they're actually not that different. You, you know, things yeah. might be presented in, in, a, in a different way, in a different language where they're a different Absolutely. you know but at yeah. the end of the day we are all the same, the same. And what is positive change for you go with the the gandhi idea that it be the change you want to see in the world and if we see things that are, aren't in our eyes ideal try to make the ideal and that's a positive change